Hey, so welcome back to the shop, everybody. So we're working on the hand plane till. In the last two episodes, we did the box joints for the corners and the dado joints for the inside portions of the cabinet and shelves. In addition to cutting my very first dovetail today, we'll be 90% done after today's video, so stick around. I used a pencil and I marked out the position where the planes will sit. There's going to be a laminated board from pallet wood that will sit across like this at an angle. And then there's going to be um, some mortise and tenon support, horizontal supports that will attach here, 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 and here. I went ahead and milled those up and these are three quarter inch square and they will go across like this and mortise and tenon into the walls of the cabinet. And they'll be actually sat in the cabinet at an angle like that to support the plane bed. There's going to be two going across like this. I also went ahead and milled up some half inch oak boards for the cleats. There's going to be a cleat that attaches to the cabinet and then a wall cleat as well. And they will, as all my French cleats are, have a 45 degree angle that uh, basically matches one another and that's what will hold it to the wall. The plan for attaching this to the cabinet is by using a uh, lap joint. So this is going to, this is actually the front and it'll attach to the back, but it's going to lap over like this. And I think I may use like a lapping dovetail where it will attach to the walls of the cabinet. And then the cleat that will be on the wall will be um, only about this wide and it'll mount to the wall and then the cabinet can hang right on that. The cleats will actually be completely hidden from view when the cabinet is held up against the wall with the exception of the, the through dovetails that I'm discussing now. I did glue a, a small backer board out of some scrap oak that's a glued to the uh, roof of the cabinet and that's what the, the plain board, the board that the plane sit on will rest against. It'll all make a lot more sense once we put it together for the final glue up. So I took the cabinet apart and I clamped the two uh, sides of the cabinet together and I had already marked out the mortise positions where those horizontal supports will be. So I just clamped the boards together and I went ahead and uh, drilled and chiseled out the mortise for each one of those. Now I'm going to take the boards apart and clean up the other side as well. So those four mortises look pretty good and uh, now I'm going to cut the tenons that will um, attach the horizontal supports to the side walls of the cabinet using the mortise and tenon joint. And this is one I've already done. And uh, I decided to make the tenon the same size in terms of thickness as the walls of the cabinet just to make it look sort of symmetrical or, or I guess I didn't want the tenon to be a lot bigger than the thickness of the walls of the cabinet. It is going to be a little bit longer, therefore it'll stick through a little bit. And then I can come back and plane off, plane the uh, end of the tin flush with the wall of the cabinet. So I'm just cutting these with my hand, actually my dovetail saw, and I'm just kind of rough cutting them and then I can go back and clean them up with the chisel a little bit later. If you'd like to see how I lay out my mortise and tenon joints, I would encourage you to watch the uh, video series on building my workbench or building my treadle lathe, both of which were assembled uh, using mortise and tenon joinery. And I went through extensively how to lay out those joints and also how to cut them with hand tools.
listen to the sound as I cut and you can tell when the saw is getting close to the other kerf that I cut. <laughs> Until the sound changes. So let's turn our attention now to the cleat that I'll be attached to the tool cabinet. I went ahead and milled this up, cut the 45 degree uh, angle on it. Also went ahead and cut it to final length. If you look closely there, it's subtle but it's a dovetail. My first dovetail I've ever cut, as a matter of fact. So I got this little dovetail uh, jig, I think at a garage sale several years ago, and I've never actually used it. And this makes it super easy to lay out the dovetails. So what I did was I scribed a line giving the thickness of the walls of the cabinet and then laid down the, uh, the jig and made my marks for the, uh, for the angle of dovetail and then flipped it over and did the same for the other side. Now I'm excluding the portion that has the miter joint. I'm just gonna cut that off and then the dovetail will be in between uh, this scribe line and then the shoulder here. So I'm just cutting these with a handsaw. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it'd be a lot more difficult to get the saws all set and uh, or get the router bits and all that all set up. So it's simple enough just to go ahead and cut it with my dovetail handsaw. The first thing I'm doing is just cutting off that piece where the miter joint is for the cleat. Then next I'm just going to cut down the shoulders to the depth of the dovetail mark. And we'll do that on both sides. And it seems to me the easiest thing to do is just take my chisel and just pare down to the line. You might notice I've been using the uh, three quarters Irwin Marples chisel for quite a bit of this work. I really like it. It's super sharp as well from when I sharpened it for the, uh, the review we did. I haven't sharpened it again, but man, it makes short work of these dovetails. So there we go. That didn't take long at all. We got a dovetail on that end and then a dovetail on this end. And then these uh, two dovetails will connect the cleat board, the tool cleat, to the back of the cabinet. So the next thing I did is just mark the position of where the cleat, the tool cleat, will attach to the cabinet. And I'm not going to cut these with the boards um, clamped together. I'm going to do them individually because each dovetail is slightly different. But I wanted to make sure that the distance between the top of the cabinet and the position of the cleat is identical because if it's not, then the, then the cabinet may not sit on the wall perfectly uh, level. So now I'm just gonna take the uh, piece that has the dovetail on it, the cleat uh, board, and then mark out its position where it will adjoin the cabinet, being sure that the cleat is in the correct position before I mark the joints. And now I've got my marking uh, gauge set to the thickness of the cleat board, and I'm gonna mark that on each side of the uh, of the cabinet uh, wall here. I'm gonna cut this a little bit smaller than what I know I need and then I can pare it down um, to the exact uh, uh, dimensions of my dovetail. So now I'm just going to make some extra curves to make it easier to chisel out the waste. I'm going to be really cautious here because the wood's going to be prone to tear out because of the direction of the grain. So 
So that's looking pretty good. Now I just need to clean it up. So I'm going to go ahead and clamp um, this piece of scrap here to the back side. That way, as I start chiseling out that, um, as I start chiseling out the joint, it won't tear out as easily. So now I'm going to go ahead and just clean up that and take the uh, take the bottom of the joint down to my marking line. So I think we're getting close to our final our final depth of the dovetail. I'm just on top of my marking line now. So here in a second we'll try it and see how the fit is. Okay, let's see how our fit is. Looks pretty good. It's just a little bit high on the top side here. I think actually we've got a little bit of hump in the middle, so let me take that hump out and I think we'll be in good shape. Okay, I'm super happy with that. The fit seems to be really good. Uh, I think it's good enough that we can uh, cut the other side and then go and uh, try to dry fit the entire, um, the entire cabinet again. So I've got all the rough work done. I've got all the joints cut, the box joints, the mortise, the tenons, the dovetails. And now I think we can go ahead and dry fit everything and make sure that our fit is good before we take everything apart, sand it down, and then prepare it uh, for a final glue up. Okay, let me summarize where we are. We've got the bottom cabinet complete, still no glue, just uh, dry fitted. And then we've got the uh, horizontal supports that are mortise and tenon into the walls of the cabinet. And there's two of those. The second is here. And then we've got the French cleat, um, the tool cleat that's mounted in the back of the cabinet. And then we've got, I glued in these um, boards here just to hold the plain, uh, the, the plane bed. The plan for the plane bed is to rest on the shelf and the two horizontal supports and then this uh, backer board here. Then on the back of the cabinet you can see how the uh, cleat is tongue and grooved into the frame. So I'm going to be uh, making the plane bed or the surface where the planes will sit out of some uh, pine panels, uh, pallet panels that I milled up previously. And there's going to be two different uh, miter angles. I didn't want to waste any of the panels that I made, so I went ahead and just made a little uh, made a little jig here that has the angles on it. And both of the angles are significantly different. And I got those angles really by just trial and error. The way that the plane bed will sit in is this uh, steeper angle will mount at the top, and then the uh, less steep angle will be at the bottom. It's going to rest against this backer piece, the two horizontal supports, and then the shelf at the bottom. So I'm going to have those pine panels going across the bed here or across the till here for the planes to sit on. So I've got two pine panels that I milled up. They're both 12 inches in width and that's about the maximum thickness I can get through my planer. So I'm going to go ahead and put a nice straight edge on one side using my planer jig here. And then I'm going to mill those down. We're going to cut those down into about three and a half or four uh, inch wide panels. 
because I want to make those compound miter uh, angles using my miter saw and I can't cut any deeper than that um, on the saw. So I'm going to have to cut these down into smaller pieces. So I've got all my panels cut for the plane bed and my saw will not cut that steep angle that will um, that will marry with the top of the plane till. So I just uh, cut a piece of MD, a scrap piece of MDF at the right angle and uh, let me show you how that'll work. There's got to be an easier way to do that, but that's the only way that I could come up with with the tools that I had. But I've got a nice uh, a miter there uh, that should mate well with the upper portion of the cabinet. So now I need to take my little jig and mark the length of each panel or board and then the corresponding angle at the bottom. So it's nice having this little uh, piece that I cut beforehand. That way I can use it as my, um, as my marking stick. The next angle we're going to cut is going to be a little bit easier. It's not nearly as steep of an angle. And we can do that with the uh, miter saw. Well, I'm super happy with the way this is looking. I'm not going to um, uh, cut this last board to its final to its final width until I get everything glued up. But at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and break it apart for the last time, sand everything, go ahead and chamfer the edges, and uh, get it ready for glue up.